How you doing Cali Crowd? Resistance bands can be a great way for allowing us to engage in calisthenics techniques that are well outside the realm of our current skill level and make what would otherwise be impossible feats of strength immediately more accessible. In my last video, I walked through exactly what my back lever training looks like, but I got a few questions on how I use resistance bands to assist me. So today we'll be going through exactly how to do the resistance band back lever. Jumping straight into it, the resistance band back lever can appear very intimidating the first time we see it. So to get us started, let's go through some cues that we can actually follow and adhere to, starting with selecting what type of band to go for. I personally would suggest that the first time you attempt this, you try it with a band that displaces at least 50% of your body weight. This will ensure that at least for that first time that you perform this, you will have ample support should you need it. I, for example, weigh 79 kilos, so here I've selected a band that shifts 45 kilos. Loop that band over the bar and through itself before tying a knot in the middle of the remaining bit of the band. From here, grab the bar with a pronated grip and flip into a reverse hold, almost like you were doing a skin the cap, and as you do so, allow the band to sit between your legs. There can be a real fear of falling, so if you have those concerns, feel free to start on a low bar first. In any case, the inverse hang position is perfect to think about the next cue, which is all about the lats. The lats are one of the biggest muscles in the posterior chain and we want to make sure we're not just carrying them along for the ride. We can elicit a greater response from them by visualising squeezing our arms closer to our sides. This brings me on to the next cue, which is what the shoulders should be doing. As we lower ourselves down, it can be tempting to turtle the head and excessively tuck the chin in and round the shoulders. Instead, what we should be looking to do is depress the shoulders, slightly lift the chin and open up the chest. By doing this, we get closer to that flat back aesthetic, as well as slightly shifting more weight to the front portion of the lever, which makes our legs slightly easier to hold up. The next cue is to reach with our feet. Okay, so we're in our assisted back lever position, but it can be tempting to cheat and make this exercise easier by bending at the knees, therefore shortening the lever arm. But this disproportionately places more stress on the lower back, and we don't want that. Visualizing reaching with the feet and really pushing them away appears counterintuitive as we're elongating that lever arm, but by doing so, we're encouraging other muscles, mainly the glutes and hamstrings, to get up off their ass and start working. This means that we can shift from that interior pelvic tilt into more of a neutral hip position. It also means that we can hold more tension throughout the lower body, making our back levers look better, but also making them easier to hold over the long term of our back lever training. Also, note that I said here, reach with the feet, not point the toes. In my opinion, you can point the toes if you want to, but I don't think it's particularly necessary. The final cue is really about maximizing this isometric and it is work harder than the band. In this position, it can be so tempting to just passively rest on the band, even if you've chosen a band that offers a little bit more of a challenge. To counter this, we can visualize pulling ourselves back upwards, almost as if we're trying to get back to that inverted position with straight legs. Don't actually aim to pull yourself back up, but the intent to do so will aid us in being more deliberate in our practice and by imagining pulling ourselves back up, we get a deeper contraction. I want to quickly talk about how not to use resistance band in the back lever as well. When it comes to the resistance band back lever, there are many ways to skin the cat. I often see people attempt to perform the back lever with the band anchored to their feet. Aside from this looking like an absolute pain to get into, it's not ideal for two reasons. First, it encourages the valley back that we know we really don't want in our back lever aesthetic and we're looking to avoid. And second, it turns the back lever into something more akin to a closed chain movement, which takes away from some of that specificity that we're looking for by doing this exercise in the first place. If you're struggling to perform the full resistance band back lever, either use a thicker band that offers more resistance or go into a resistance band tuck back lever. Overall, the resistance band back lever is great for getting you familiar with the back lever technique in a way that allows both beginners and intermediate athletes alike to get the most out of this exercise. I'd suggest that you hold this isometric for anywhere from 10 to about 15 seconds. Anything longer than that and you probably should be looking to progress 
further, either doing a harder progression or using a lighter band. But as always guys, I wanna know what you think. Let me know how this helps you in your training. Let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you found this valuable and I'll see you in the next one.